So today we're going to take a look at a structural analysis program called Visual Analysis. In this program I love, I use it for teaching structural analysis and it's it's kind of a balance between something like Mastan where everything's manual input to something maybe like STAD where the inputs may be a little bit quirkier and this has a nice user interface that you know it has its own quirks but it, it has it has the ability to do pretty small problems up to pretty complex things right so it's not it's not an astran it's not like a complex finite element solver but it does have finite element pieces if you end up doing a finite element analysis as well but what we're going to focus on today is kind of just a two-dimensional analysis so just getting your feet wet modeling a pro a, a problem to see what it looks like and to do that what I'm going to use is this portal frame and I've got a video of how to do the hand calculations it's a great idea to know how to do hand calculations and a structural model um, hand in hand because in order to know if the model's right you kind of have to be able to understand the hand calculation piece of it and it goes both ways okay so to do that we're going to jump back here to visual analysis and we're just going to walk through some processes uh, but first let's open up visual analysis so when you open visual analysis you get kind of a default screen here and it's set up with your standard ribbon on the top a project manager on the side and kind of your model view uh, over on the right here and the first thing that we're going to do here is we're going to set up the project by making it 2d and setting the units so to do that what I'm going to do here is first under the project manager I'm not going to be using three dimensions for this model so I'm just going to pick plane frame that takes the three dimensional aspects of it out and in addition what I can do here is I can go to either manage units or click this little drop down uh, to change my units and because we're going to be using kilonewtons and meters I'm going to go click on kilonewtons and meters and those are my uh, input units and output units okay so step one is really just to set up uh, the project so step two is to define the project geometry okay and one of the things that I probably should have done earlier was uh, it was when I was setting up the project I should have changed the grid so when we come in here you'll notice that when we switch to kilonewtons and meters this grid it gives me a grid that has x spacing that works well in feet but not so much in meters so I'm going to change this to one meter and one meter because now what this tells me is every time I snap to a point on this grid it's going to snap to a one meter so now when I come into my structure my members drop members is already uh, you know already highlighted it's already selected and all I can do is come in here I'm going to start at the origin where this uh, x and y axis is I'm going to come up six meters and I can tell it's six by the number of boxes also by if you look in the right hand corner down here you'll see that it goes up to six okay so I start there and then I'm just going to keep going so now I'm going to come over five meters okay and then I'm going to come back down uh, six meters so this tells me an absolute coordinate you know in the bottom right hand corner but that's kind of the second step it's just to define the geometry um, in addition if I hold control I can select multiple members or if I hold shift I can select all the members at once so if I wanted to change my database shape or you know come to a standard parametric shape I could do that as well I could change this to a rectangle maybe that's you know 0.2 meters by 0.2 meters or something you know something along those lines or I could come in here and I could say I want a standard parametric or I'm on a database shape and pick a database shape from uh, one of a listing of catalogs so this is another thing I love about visual analysis is you have a whole listing of catalogs that you can pick from so these are standards that you can use right but when you're defining your members your geometry what you want to do is you first you want to you know make sure you get the nodes in the right spot if you make a mistake you can click on a node and just go ahead and change it to whatever you want it to be and yeah that's not right I actually I do want it at six but you know you can go in and specifically edit those nodes um, another thing to note is the direction that you draw these beams is the direction from the start node to the end node so for example you know this node here is node one and this node is node 2 and when I drew that beam I went from top to bottom you'll see the start node node 1 is node 1 uh, node 2 is node 2 okay so hopefully that makes some sense um, you can also define materials in here and this really goes ahead and defines your members okay and so that's kind of the first the first thing that I want to do the other thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this member and I'm going to right click and I'm going to say I'm going to split this member because I'm going to end up putting an internal pin at this location so I'm going to do two equal segments if you had different segments you can change that or you can come in here and change you know your X coordinate wherever you want it to be so this was kind of step two we defined our geometry 
So step three is gonna be define supports. And if we come back to visual analysis here, um, when we define supports, what we wanna do is click on each of those supports. Again, I'm gonna hold control here because both of these supports have a pin support. And to do to make a pin support, I need to restrain DX and DY. In other words, if we hover over this, we can see that this prevents the node from displacing, from moving, from it's from displacing at all in the global X or global Y direction. We wanna leave RZ free here because as a pin, this thing can rotate. Okay, so some of you are gonna be tempted to come here and set this, well, this is an internal pin, right? So don't we have to do like DX and DY? Well, the answer is no. And really what that does, is it leads us to our next, our next uh, topic. And our next topic is to define the beam connections. Okay, so the beam connections is what defines those internal pins. So, uh, you know, these, these nodes we just defined as having an X and a Y uh, restraint, right? It, what we want to do up here is, I mean, typically you think, okay, well, I want to make this node a pin, but that's not exactly how it works. The way visual analysis by default connects members is with a rigid connection. So there's a moment transfer between these two members. If you want to change that, you have to click on a member and say, instead of it being a rigid connection, you want to change it to like, let's say a rigid simple. And then what you see is this little green circle show up. And that little green circle means that this does not have a, this cannot carry a moment at that end of the beam. Okay, so this is going to create a, a, a pin, an internal pin at that joint by, by allowing a simple connection at the end of this beam. In other words, the end of this beam where the green circle is, it can't resist any moment. So some of you think, well, one green circle is good, let's do two, okay? And I'll show you the problem with this. If I do this, I can put two green circles, but that's a bad thing, don't do it. Because what that does is it kind of blows up the program. And, and essentially all the math works out, you end up essentially kind of like dividing by zero. You get an undefined error because everything is zero. There's no moment at all, right? But here you can have a moment that's zero and it still works if that makes sense. But basically, when you're doing internal pins, only one side gets that green circle. Only one side gets the simple restraint. Okay, so that was step four. We defined our internal pins. Step five is we want to go and define our loading. Okay, so to define loading, right, this, this problem isn't super complex in terms of loading, but all that I want to do is come to the loading tab, and then you can put in load cases, load combinations, all sorts of things here. Um, for this question, I'm not using load combinations, so I'm going to turn them off, but you'll notice that the ASD, LRFD, uh, various building code, uh, IBC, you know, load checks, and load combinations are in here, but I'm going to turn them off because I'm not using them for this example. Um, in addition, what I'm going to, what I am going to do is I'm going to look at the edit load case button here because what I noticed is in this problem, we're not evaluating self weight. So I'm going to turn off the self weight for this problem. Okay. So no self weight that's turned off. And then what I want to do here is come and put on a nodal load and you'll notice in the loading tab, there's a, a nodal load here. So I can just put this in, I can say 20 kilonewtons um, in, the, in the X direction. And that shows up as an arrow here. So if I got that wrong, I could come in, I could change it you know, over here, I could make it 30 or I could make it whatever I needed to, to make it um, in, in order to make it correct. Okay, so we define our loading. We do, you know, we, we started at the beginning by defining our geometry, defining our boundary conditions, our internal pins, our loading, and then we're all set, right? So now we get the fun part. And that part is to analyze the model. So step six here is to analyze the model. And to analyze the model, it's a pretty straightforward thing. All you have to do is go to result view. Okay, and barring any you know unforeseen problems, the result view should show status that looks pretty good. Um, it says the you, you know you might get a design check error, but we weren't we're not setting this up to design these members. Uh, we're just looking at the structural analysis and member force piece of it. So the status looks pretty good. Um, and then what we can do here is in our results filter, we can start looking at different pieces of this, right? I mean, you get some information here, which is definitely useful. Um, you can go to the results filter, like you can click on uh, uh, show reactions, for example, and you can see the reactions and these reactions uh, match what we got by hand. So that's a really good indicator. Um, in addition, one of the things that we were looking at 
in that problem, uh, you know, when we did it by hand was the moment. So I can go to member results and I can turn on my moment diagram, right? So I can actually turn on a moment diagram and this moment diagram is going to look exactly like the moment diagram we came up with by hand. So pretty quickly you can see the moment results. If you also want to see a, a more detailed moment diagram, I'm going to hold shift and click all the members and then I'm going to go to member graph. So this is pretty cool because it shows, it, you know, this thing kind of laid out flat, but it shows the whole shear and moment diagram. So another great tool. Um, but again, play around with these, with these, you know, results filters. There's a lot of pretty cool options in there. So after that, um, the last thing that you really need to do is to go and create a report. So visual analysis has some great reporting functions in here and uh, you know, we'll come into report view here. Um, and the report view is nice because you can put in all your structure tables. I mean, you can put in every, anything you want, but the nice thing in here is I'm going to click a double click on the materials, member analysis properties. I'm going to do all the structure tables. Typically, if I'm putting together a report, I want to put together enough information so that another engineer could pick this up and actually go create the same model. I've looked at other people's work before where like they don't give you enough information and it's frustrating because you're, you're trying to play detective and figure out what's going on. If you put in all your structure tables, all your load tables, this is enough information that somebody else can figure out where that beam starts, where it ends, what the member section is, what the member is, what the material is, what the connection is. It, they can really go and recreate this whole model just based on this, this report, which is a great to have in an appendix. Uh, but it's also not so much information that it's just overwhelming. Okay. But in addition, if you do want member forces, you can put member forces in, right? So if we do want to know uh, the maximum, you know, axial force or the maximum moment, we can click on that. We can also select this member or select this table in this table. We get some options where we can turn off extreme rows if we don't want extreme rows only, um, you know, or we can leave them on where it highlights the maximum or minimum values in there uh, for the moment shear and those sorts of things. So, you know, that's it. I mean, once we got our, once we got our report, we can save it as a PDF if we want or put it into our report. So all that being said, you know, this is a pretty cool tool. It allows you to model uh, a structure. It allows you to uh, come up with results and I hope it's useful for you. So if you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment below, but otherwise keep working hard and moving onward and upward.